Hey guys, how you doing? Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to another edition of One on One. I told you earlier today that I might be coming on here tonight to do a uh, video kind of outlining some more comics that uh, I would call them comic book fails, you know, comic book pressing fails that I actually came in and uh, worked on and recovered the grades that these books should have gotten in the first place. Now, I have featured these books on Instagram. You may have seen them on Instagram already. But I want to come on here because a few, well, probably a few months ago now, I did some videos where I actually, um, where I actually showed the books. Uh, I, I took them out of the slabs and I featured some of the um, the defects that were in the in the book. So what I'm going to do in just a moment here, I'm going to go one by one. There's only three books, and you saw them on the on the, on the title card for this video. It was a uh, Daredevil number 131, uh, 168, and a Marvel premiere 28, and um, uh, they really jumped up in grade quite a bit. I want to try to move my. I'm not really properly centered here and i want to try to fix this but uh and i want to show you these books let me just i i did a special um there it is right there i'll transition over here we go i'm going to play this video for you off of youtube you'll see uh, i'm not sure if my sound's going to work here i think it is actually but sit back relax i might pause this and show talk to you live about what i'm seeing here but here is the video now i'll be quiet because I, I think i'm gonna you're gonna hear me twice here we go and this is the, really, guys, the only way to really determine if comic can be improved by you know, pressing and cleaning. Let's have a quick look around the comic. Already I'm starting to see some little divots and dents that I'm pretty confident can be removed with a good press. Oh, That's some good stuff. There's some good pointer out here. There's some good little imperfections. Yeah. Right? Here, see that right there? Go down here, back up a little bit. What you can do about that? You can clean this up a little bit, but because of the loss of, of color, you can't get color back. But you can certainly straighten that out a bit. You can to do it right there. Along the spine, another one right there. These these have to be taken care of, you know. If you guys have been following me on Instagram, you saw I, put, I posted a couple of books that were apparently pressed from the same. Actually, got a guy from the exact same dude who apparently pressed these books. And there's so many of these finger bends and dents that are still in the book. These have got to go. These will bring the comic grade right down. You can't just leave one or two. They got to be removed as fast as possible. Along the spine here as well, with lots of little imperfections. I wouldn't call them creases, like dents again, which can be popped back out, smoothed out. This book could be made to look so much better. We did it right there. It's hard for me to. There we go. Yeah. Anyways, guys, just give you an example. If you want to go back and watch this video, I, I I turn it over. You can see all the problems in the back of these books too, but um, this is the Marvel Spotlight Twenty Eight, and um. The book was a 6.5. Again, I removed it from the, the slab and I went over it with you all on YouTube in a video I did a few months back and uh, the book has returned. And as you, if you, if you saw the unboxing, you see it right now, 9.0. What a super huge increase bump in grade. And again, the aggravating part about this entire process is being told by my client that the book was pressed and cleaned by someone else and they submitted it on their behalf. And that just drove me absolutely crazy when I heard that. And I'm hearing this more and more and more often now from clients who, uh, people that are just getting back into the hobby, they might not be sure about what to expect from pressing and cleaning. Uh, and they go with the first person who tells them they can do a great job for them. Anyway, 6.5 to a 9.0, you can see certainly that there was a lot left to be uh, worked on. I, I was absolutely flabbergasted that this book came back a 9. Very happy for the owner as well. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back to the video screen. Well, actually, let me find the next um, the next one for you. Uh, which one? We'll, we'll do this one here. I think it's right about... Yeah, we'll go to this one right there. All right. So give me one sec, we'll move over. Now we're gonna look at Daredevil 131. Uh, here we go, let's play the video. There's a uh, kind of a long shot 
Let's take a closer look around the book. Off the bat, I'm seeing some spine indentations. It's going to pop back out. Oh, there's another finger bend right there. Oh, right there. See by the daredevil, the B. In there. Pull that one by the A right there. You see, guys, a, a quick press will not remove those. Okay, it really will not remove those dents. It might minimize them a little bit, but to get rid of those dents, you have to do some more work you have to do. You know, the humidification is always going to help, most you know, most certainly, uh, depending on how uh, the condition of the book in terms of its, uh, you could say, its page quality will determine if you have to do a um, any humidification or not. Here's another dent over by Daredevil's mark, the bicep right there. See that? That 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 can go. Um, sometimes these these dent these little finger dents or whatever you want to call them have, uh, have you know cause color loss. When that happens, you're out of luck. You can get rid of the dent, but the line of missing color will still be there. In this case, it looks like the color is intact, which is fantastic. Looking along the book here. Let's see the oh, there we go. Another nice long. What was that down there? The, yeah, it's kind of a dent, right? Long, I don't know if you can catch it or not. Right down this way. Problem. Similar to the last book, we've got some, um, you know, folded edges here. All right, so there you go. Uh, again, a really quick review of what some of the problems were on that uh, Daredevil 131. Um, again, if you go back to that video and watch it its entirety, uh, again, titled Comic Book Fails. I did two Comic Book Fails videos. I think that was the first one I did. It was back in October, I believe. Uh, if you go and check it out, you'll see, you can see all the problems the book had. That book had, anybody who said that book was was pressed and cleaned uh, must have been out to lunch. Anyway, it was a 6.0. I took it out, did some more work to it. 8.5. 8.5. Unbelievable. So... You know, uh, it's not as simple as just throwing it in a press, closing it down, and being happy with the results, right? It's not as simple as that. Uh, I'm working on books right now uh, that have been pressed three times. There's some stubborn, whoops, there goes my phone. There was some stubborn problems that, uh, that I'm still not happy with, and they're back in the humidifier again, right? If you just want to, you know, a lot of guys who are doing this now are churning the books out because the more they do, the more money they make, right? And a lot of a lot of these guys, I think, think that once the books are graded, people are going to be content and satisfied and not ask any questions. Well, luckily, you know, Danny, who, who who's, who's these books belong to, did ask questions, you know, and um, and he should certainly show these pictures to the person who who charged him and demand some demand some money back. Like holy cow! Not not only did he charge him for the pressing. He also charged him to have the books graded and waited for those books to come back, only to come back at a grade way less than they should have been, you know? Totally not appropriate. Totally unethical, in my opinion. Anyways, let me go to the last one here. Let me find it anyways for you. Let's see where it is. Uh, oh, here it is, right? Is that it right there? Yeah, right. I want to get it ready for right, right there. Okay, hold on a sec. All right, here we go. Here's the last one. It's a uh, Daredevil 168. And let's see what happens with uh, this book here. Check out the video. This book, up and grade a little bit. Let's have a look at, again, let's have a look around. Let's kind of zoom in a little bit and have a look. We're not going to see as many problems with this one because, again, it's a 9.2, right? But there are, there should be some issues because it's not a 9.8. Let's have a look. Right off the bat, we see some denting along the spine area, so we can pop those back in. Another one right there, spine tip. Right there. Okay, going along the book, there's a slight, I don't know if you're going to be able to catch this or not, but there's a slight spine, very slight spine roll. See that line that goes along by, by his hand right there? You can get rid of that. Moving right along the edge. <laughs> Excuse me. The, the edge has uh, isn't very smooth around the edge. I want to make this edge a little more crisp. 
Now, to the corner here, this is this probably will not hit a 9.8 because of this right here, guys. You see that? That edge is kind of worn out a little bit, lost color. So I think the most we're going to try, try to get on this about the 9.6. Here. Oh, remember one of those finger bends I was talking about right there on the neck? Move up a little bit of the lights for you. Another kind of a imperfection along the edge there, which I'll smooth out. Oh, look at that, a nice big dent right there at the bottom. That's pretty significant, actually. And if that was pressed before, then why wasn't that removed? Good question, Kev. <laughs> so, nice looking book. You know, another little dent there as well. But again, you have to. All right, so let's uh, go back to the page. It was a 9.2, like I said. And because of the, some of the imperfections that I saw when I was going around the book, I did say, like, we're going to aim for a 9.6. And you know what? 9.6. There you go. All three books crank up in, uh, in grade. Excellent. This, this is a great example of uh, cracking, repressing, or pressing, and uh, resubmitting. It worked. It worked, and it worked wonderfully. Does it always work out that way? No, it does not. And do you always get bumps like that? Do you get bumps, you know, like uh, two or two and a half, three point grade bumps? Not always. Any grade bumps I'm happy with. Uh, but this time around, it worked out really well. Very happy for Danny. And once again, congratulations for finally getting these books to where they needed to be. So again, happy to help anybody who has had their books worked on. And if you're questioning whether or not the work was done adequately. Uh, send me some pictures. Danny, uh, I'm, okay, you guys all know I'm in Oshawa, Ontario. Danny's from the west, co uh, west western side of West Canada there, Alberta. And um, he sent me the books. And, you know, we talked about it ahead of time. Uh, he was pretty confident. He has a good eye, too. And he, he was pretty confident. He thought the books weren't as, weren't pushed weren't pressed as far as they could have been. So he sent me the books with um, with hopes that we were going to see an increase. And as soon as I saw the books, I, I, I noticed there was issues. And I mean, other times people do send me books and I and I feel that the books may may not. Um, uh, recently, I did some books for a fella down in, uh, for Mike down in, uh, from the States there, from New York. Uh, and um, the three or four books he sent, I didn't, I recommended we don't do, we not do any of them. And, uh, but he wanted to try and we tried a couple and one came back exactly the same and one went down half a grade. So, I mean, you have to really see the issues, you know, you the problems have to be very evident. Um, I'm, I'm just amazed these books bounced up as high as they did. And they, they really pressed out really quite nice. I'm going to go back to my, uh, main screen here. Where the heck is it? There it is. Okay. So again, um, yeah, uh, let's go to the chat and see who's here. Uh, I, again, this is a very last minute. What was it a last? Well, yeah, it was a last minute video. I did. I've been wanting to come on here and do this video since I received these books about a week ago, and I had to get these books back to Danny soon. So I wanted to do this video before that time. Uh, and uh, today, when I did my unboxing, I said, "Guys, I'm probably going to come on here maybe later on this evening and do a video uh, such as this." And I did. So I'm glad I finally got around to doing it. I am going to go to the chat window and see who is with us. Oh, we got a lot, I got a lot of chats going on. Let me find my chat window. Where are you? There it is. Okay, let's go over and see who is here. I'll go down a bit. We got uh, David's here. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Long time no talk. Happy, and by the way, happy Easter to everybody. Hope you had a nice uh, evening. And James is here as well. And Colin, how's it going? I didn't fall asleep. I was just getting everything ready. Sam, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Hood Inc. Comics, hello. Stavros is back. Number twice in one day, Stavros. Twice in one day. Uh, uh, my ASM1, how did not get a bump? You significantly improved. Yeah, I did. You know, and it could have been the greater. Again, I, I and and again, and we we I, I kind of outlined Stavros's books too. Actually, uh, funny enough, if you go back and watch that those videos, you you see the improvements, vast improvements. But Stavros Stavros's book stayed where it's at. Sometimes you can fix a book, uh, and it will be much better, but you won't get that grade bump. It just happens sometimes. Um, Call says Stavros, you're too greedy. That's why. Oh, come on now. 
Uh, Dennis, how you doing, Dennis? Good to see you. Pass the Sharpie. Yeah, you want to sign that book? Uh, let's go down a bit more. David says, Kevin, I took your advice and worked on my Hulk 181 myself. I got a whole gray bump. Dave, man, good for you. Congratulations. You know, don't be afraid. If you go slow and follow the steps, there's no reason why you can't work on your own books if you have the uh, desire to do so. Look, I could, I could do the brakes on my own car. You know, I can, I can, uh, you know, fix plumbing. I'm pretty, I'm lucky. I'm handy. I'm handy that way. But as I've gotten older, um, you know, I turned 50 this year. I, I don't want to do that stuff anymore. I don't want to fix my own brakes. I don't want to go under the, the kitchen sink and fix the faucets and leaky taps and whatever. I don't want to do that anymore. I, I did when I was in my 20s and my 30s. And now I don't want to do that anymore. Um, and that being said, some people don't don't have that skill set, don't have the ability to work on, don't feel comfortable working on on their on their vehicles or on you know fixing up their houses and so. I was at my buddy James's house yesterday for for a quick little bite, and you know he's taking us around the house and he's redid the floors and he redid the the washrooms and his his whole basement was all redone. He did it all himself, and God bless him. I don't want to do that ever again. I've done all that myself. And yes, I can do it. I don't want to do it. I dread going to Home Depot or any of those types of places. I don't want to do it. And some people feel the exact same way about pressing comic books. They don't want to do it. They don't, they don't trust themselves to do it or they don't have that the eye for it. And, and that's okay. We, we all can't do everything, right? I, I, there are some things I can't do either. I'm not great at many things. You know what I mean? But... It is what it is. And I'm glad you have the confidence and the skill to do that, David. That's great. And I always encourage people to try it. Why not try it? You know? Uh, Stavros, you have my ASM 101.8.5. It was pressed by the same person who did it. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> good, then. Then maybe we're going to see a nice bump in your Hulk 181, then. Hey, eh? Let's hope. Colin, uh, Stavros, I believe you, but I'm already jealous of your guy. Yeah, Colin, I'm going to tell you. Craig, uh, yeah, he's got a, Stav's got a really nice collection of comic books, that's for sure. Uh, wow, 6.5 to a 9, amazing. If that was a modern, you'd be lucky to get an 8. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I, again, I was so pleased with the, with the results. I was, I knew they turned out really well. And I was waiting on, on bated breath for that, for those books to be finished. I was every, you know, week checking, checking, checking. They finally came in. I was so happy that they, they increased in grade. Because uh, I, I knew, I knew that they were, there was so much left on those books, you know, and that's the issue that I'm having with, I wouldn't call it an issue. That's a learning curve I'm having with Charlo right now, because Charlo, you know, he, he's, he's, he sees all the problems, but then when, if it's not fixed the first or second time, he thinks it can't, you know, maybe it can't be fixed, but more, many times it can, you just got to know the little trick to do to get it fixed you know and and even and maybe sometimes he feels that maybe i'm done now but you got to push it to the limit i mean you know when I, I i push books to a certain point and the only time I'll, I'll i'll be really uh careful or i'm always careful but i mean what's the word i'm looking for apprehensive about continuing is if there's you know structural damage the book could could occur by pushing it even further but most of the time the books are in pretty good you know or physical shape and they can handle being pressed so if you can push it and get the most out of the book then, then you, you'd go ahead and do that and that's where he's learning he's learning how far he can push those books and that's why, why i'm checking every single book that he's working on i say yeah this can be fixed no no yes this can be fixed this can be fixed and this can be fixed and then we go back and you know what when he goes back and does it the books come out beautiful i'll say try this do that go here go there and he does it and it works out. And, that, and that's the, the part of the learning that the learning curve. And once he gets that down, man, it's going to be a good thing. Uh, Hood Inc. Comics. I just bought multiple books on pressing and cleaning and just bought a 15 by 15 press uh, and the 15 by 15 steel plate. That's good, Hood, Hood Inc. You're, on, you're well on your way as well. There's lots of information online, tons of tutorials, tons of tutorial videos on on youtube and online that you can um work on those um what do you call excuse me those dry mount prep not dry mount those t-shirt presses which is which what you have 15 by 15 they're good to practice on to learn on but keep your eye open for a good dry mount press you will get a better press every time 6.99 super bump yep 
Dennis, let me save Joshua Tree to your spoiled grandkids. Let me save Joshua Tree to your spoiled grandkids. <laughs> okay, I think you're talking to someone else. Uh, could be that the presser is overwhelmed and just submits without doing... Yeah, and that, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not even being overwhelmed. It's about, I've got 50 books to do here, and am I going to spend 30 minutes on one book? Am I going to spend 40 minutes on one book? Or am I going to spend 10 minutes on one book? And it's it's oftentimes, it's the preparation. If the preparation is done really well, you might get away with one, maybe two presses, you know? But if your prep isn't good, if you don't do the proper prep, you're, you're going to be pressing that sucker over and over and over again uh, to get where you need to go. Um, RP, how you doing, buddy? I ask questions, but I never have to with you. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Stav. All marker, oh, my eyes, all makers and creative take note. When you go OCD, put it to work. Yeah, you know, I don't think I'm OCD. Or am I? Maybe maybe I have, you know, I don't I, I don't think I'm, my, my place right here, my, 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 my computer workstation where I do my videos, if I could zoom out and show you, which I'm not going to, is an utter disaster area. So... Am I OCD? I don't know. I think if I was OCD, this place would be spotless. Aren't OCD people who have that, aren't they, they tend to be very uh, meticulous and spotless? Like I'm a bit of a, I can be a bit of a slob. I get to a certain point and then I have to stop what I'm doing and do it clean. But I can I can, I can work in, a, in an organized mess for a little while, but then I have to clean. But um, when it comes to the books, I just, I just don't want, I don't want to see, look, you're spending, you're spending lots of money to have these books worked on and to have the books graded. And I don't think it's fair to shortchange the clients if more, if, if you can get to where it needs to go. I was working on an ASM annual number one that was pretty friggin' rough. And, you know, I, st even though the book was probably going to come back a three, a three and a half, I still, I put it in like a couple more times. I wasn't happy. It just didn't look smooth enough for me. And I knew I could get it looking a little better. And even though I did that, it's probably not going to improve the grade. It probably won't. But I just feel better. I want it to look as good as possible, you know? I finally gave up on it. I thought we're done. I could have kept going, but I said, oh, we're done now. It's gone in like four times. Finished. Um, uh, David says, damn, Kev, you are good, man. Oh, thanks. Uh, impeccably. Comic book whisperers take note. Yes. Yes. Uh, the book says letters page. Dennis, quotation marks and wrong. Oh, what just happened there? I just jumped a little bit. Ooh. What happened? Oh, there we go. A lot of Dennis questions. Well, hold on a second, Dennis. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, busted my life. 5-3. Easter. Nobody tells me now. That's Easter. You didn't know it was Easter? Come on, Dennis. Resurrection Day, baby. You're right. Hey, Kev, it's RP talking. What's your honest opinion on using CGC's pressing cleaning services? CCS, are they worth it? Well... No, I don't think so. I think you're better off to find a good local presser or find somebody you want to work with, you know, uh, if they're long, if they're long distance, like, like I might be for some of you, then use someone like me or there's other guys out there. Good pressures out there, guys. There's lots. Um, just kind of go back and watch my videos on how to select somebody. You know what I mean? Um, and, and the good guys have a way, have a waiting list. Okay, I know myself, I've got a big waiting list. I know there's a couple other guys in Ontario that are doing this that are, uh, are, 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 um, are, qu are quite well liked and they have, a, they have a huge waiting list as well too. It's because people trust them, they've used them or used us and trust us and they keep coming back for more. So C CCS, uh, I think, the, look at, it kind of goes with what I said about once the book is slab, what are you going to do? You know, a lot of people, well, once they get their book back, they're done. They don't, they just waited a year to get their book back. And if you're using CCS, it's seven months to get your books uh, pressed uh, with CCS. And then you're waiting another, however long the tier is to get your books back. So once you get your books back, if you're not happy, what are you going to do? What's your recourse? You're going to call and complain. They're going to say, blah, blah, blah. And, and maybe they'll take your book back. And then you're waiting another year. So that's the thing. I think CCS in a pinch, if you're in a pinch and you need it, Okay, but if you can avoid it, I would. And and again, I don't. It's not that I don't think they know what they're doing. I think they do know what they're doing. I think they're overwhelmed. And unlike me, I don't have someone over top of me saying, "Get those damn! I need to have twenty two point five books done every day, or you're fired." You know, I don't have that. 
<laughs> you can ask Charlo if he feels that way. I don't think he does. But I mean, I don't have a quota. I, I, I do what I do. Um, but they have a quotas. For sure they do. They're a corporation. They have to get a certain amount of books done every single day. So when you have that, mixed in with this where is that uh are they are they pressing books three four times bull crap there's no way the books go in once and they're done right so that's my problem because uh, some not every book is a one book press and and i think i think and again i'm not i'm not saying this for sure but i'm, I'm pretty confident that they're they're swinging through fast man they're, they're pressing those books really quickly so how good of a press are you really getting what kind of attention is your book really getting you know when your books on my on my on my table Oh, my attention's on that book at that moment. And, and I work on it, I clean it, I look around. Like how like I showed in those videos there, going around the book with my little my little uh, uh, indicator there showing what the books need. I do that and I and I, I I work I fix those problem areas or I prep those problem areas so that when I press the book, it presses out proper. You know, are they doing that at CCS? I highly doubt it because Maybe the guys want to do that, but if they have to press 30, 40 books a day, there's no time to do that. That's all there is to it. They, they take the book, they prep it, put it in, bring it out, so it up to get graded. That's it. So, yeah, that, that's what I think. And, and again, you're waiting a really long time. Um, yeah, so hope that answers your question, RP. Uh, I got three days. Let's make it clean. I will never fix a car again. No, no, exactly. I'm the same. I'm done with it. I, I, I tinkered with my Camaro last summer. Um, you know, I had the engine rebuilt and, uh, I mean, if I had the room and the proper facility, I might've rebuilt that engine myself, but I, I did at the time or the energy or the desire to do at that moment, but I cleaned, I, I took all the parts off the engine. I stripped the engine down, uh, the compartment. I cleaned it. I detailed it. I took every single nut and bolt and cleaned it all. You know, I did all that. It's a lot of time too, but yeah, I'm not into that anymore. Sorry, your love. Oh yes, Kevin. Sorry. Love your videos. Been super busy. Plus just focusing on me. Stavros. I've never apologized for any of that kind of stuff. Come when you can come, man. Ah, that's right, Dennis. Me too. RP Care, can you get the same or better service from local? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, RP, local talent, man. Pressing like like already, I mean, Dave already said he's doing pressing now. Now that being said, guys who are doing it for themselves don't necessarily want to do it for other people. I've met lots of guys. I'll do my own books, but I'm not working on anybody else's books because I don't trust myself or I don't want to, if something goes wrong with the book, I don't want to be held responsible. So I get that. But there are a lot of, I mean, you, you can find pressures all over the place, right? But just start off slow with them. Give them a few tester books. Make sure they know what they're doing. Make sure that the books are, you're satisfied with the work ethic and even how they conduct themselves as a business. Right? Are they are they are they returning your phone calls? Are they pleasant to talk to? You know, the other day, I'll tell you, this is funny. Uh, I'll get out of here for a second. The other day, I am looking to have our front our front stoop. I don't have pictures. It's dark out, but our front stoop is all looks terrible. There's the rebar rust is coming through, and I want to get it refaced. You know, with concrete and whatever. And uh, I was going to do it last last year during COVID and I had called last summer, last spring, I called a few different guys and one guy came over and gave me a quote and everything. Anyways, long story short, we ended up not doing it last summer. I ended up getting garage doors instead. So I said, well, wait till next year. So this year I, I go on marketplace and some guys are advertising. So I, 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 you know, ask guys for quotes. The one guy says, what's your address? I gave him my address and he comes by. He comes by last like Tuesday, we're having dinner. He comes by while we're having dinner. The dogs are barking. I go up front and go, "How you doing?" And he's giving me a dirty look. I'm like, "What? What's what's, what's going on here?" You, you know, I'm having dinner here, but anyways. So, what do you think? He goes. He, he's looking at. It, he's going. Gives me this weird look. He goes, "I've been here before." I go, "What do you mean you've been here before?" I was here last year, and I, I looked at him. I go, "Oh, you gave me a quote last year." He goes, "Yeah," and he was very angry about the whole thing. And I'm like, I'm like. Just really defensive. He goes, I was here last year and I gave you a quote. Okay, so what was the quote? I go, I don't, I don't, I don't remember 365 days ago. I don't remember your quote and I don't remember. Do you have the website? I just for, I go, why didn't you tell me you already were here? You have to come back again to send me all the information again. I'll review it. But he was all pissed. He goes, gas, gas isn't cheap. And I said, where are you coming from? He goes, Toronto. And I said, so you came all the way from Toronto? He goes, no, I had other, other, other jobs other other quotes to do i said okay well do you want some money for your for your drive he goes no i don't want your money i said well no if you're complaining about the gas you know and i and i started to look, so i started asking him questions about the job and he's just give me the give me cut he's gonna he's gonna deck me and i'm like 
you, you don't want this job, right? He goes, well, I go, you know what? This ain't going to work. Goodbye. And I just walked. I said, see you later. Thanks for coming. Goodbye. And I walked in the house. And I slammed the door. Look at just because you came over last year and gave me a quote last year and I didn't use you last year doesn't mean I had, it doesn't mean I had to, I was obligated to use you. I mean, you came and gave me a quote. I didn't accept it at that moment, but doesn't mean I'm not going to uh, use you now, but I certainly wouldn't use this guy. The guy's attitude sucked. He, he looked like violent almost. He, he could just tell he was, he was, he was going to rage on me there. I'm like, are you, are you crazy? Like, seriously, like whatever. So I, I just stopped what I was saying to him. I said, you need to get out of here. You need to leave. You're, you're, I'm, not, even, I'm, not, I'm not working with you anyways. You just showed your true colors of what kind of person you are. Man, you know how many people have come to my shop and asked me for, for quotes and to do work for them, and I've spent an hour or two hours with them, and I don't get the job? Oh, well, that's okay. Or I talk on the phone with somebody for 30, 40 minutes about pressing or what it's going to be. Whatever. That's, the, that's a part of the business. Right? And so, you know, <laughs> this guy, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe how angry he was. You could just tell he was like, his face was sweating and he was getting all red. It was like, not worth it, dude. Not worth it. And you need to get off my property now because I was starting to get upset because I didn't do anything wrong. And you're making it seem as though I did something wrong. So anyways, yeah. So just make sure whoever you work with, you know, work with them, do, do a few jobs with them. Make sure they're cool, man. Make sure they're all right that you can work with. You want to work with people you like and people you get along with, you know, that's very important. Um, no. Hey, Tom W., how are you? <laughs> I just, I just missed your, uh, well, where the hell did it go? There it is. Uh, tips and tricks for the do-it-yourselfer. Yeah, lots out there. I don't trust myself handling a slab, let alone trying press. Stavros, that's what I mean. A lot of guys don't want to do that, right? They just don't want to. When, when people hear some of the books I work on, they're like, are you, you worked on that great of a book? And, and their eyes are like, what? I wouldn't even touch that book. And I understand it. Um, some people just don't want to work on it. And that's why I'm so darn busy. Not to mention, you know, if you've got one press, if you've got one little press and you're trying to press 50 books, it's going to take you a long time to press those 50 books. You know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, sometimes it's not even doable, especially a lot of the guys I, I deal with have like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books they want done. Uh, let's move along because we're getting on to 30 minutes here. I want to go watch my... Um, I want to go watch my uh, Walking Dead. Is this, this probably missed? Yeah, it's probably going to run again at 11 o'clock or so. Um, ETs land and say, we wish to see the library and we send them here. <laughs> yeah, I know, Dennis. It's always out of context. Not a good thing. Uh, David says, Kevin is DOC, not OCD. That's right. I'm the doc, not OCD. But I probably have some OCD tendencies. I probably do. I probably do. Uh, three days of Jesus. Yeah, I knew that one, Dennis. Uh, I trust no one but you. Oh, it's Savros, thanks, man. You know, I, I do appreciate. I, I do again, again. I always say this. I appreciate everybody's patience. Uh, I appreciate uh, you trusting me with your books in the first place. That's a big, and that's what always wowed me doing this from day one. You know, guys handing me over their books, and um, you know, at first I wasn't getting you know super huge books. I think one of the very first big books I got was from from a guy named Ken out in out in um, out in Kingston. He gave me his AF fifteen, which I think was a one eight, and I got it to a two five. If I remember, this was a long time ago. But Ken drove all the way from Kingston and gave me his AF fifteen and trusted me with that, and that was a that was really. It was really nice, you know. Um, I knew I was doing something right. People were leaving me these 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 great books, and uh, and some people and look at Stav. I've got his um his Strange Tales one ten. It's been here for God knows how long. He knows it's safe. He knows that if he wants his book back tomorrow, I'll pack it up and I'll send it back to him. You know what I mean? He knows. Uh, it, it's it's it is what it is, right? Um, and that's the thing. I built up that. I trust with my clients that I really appreciate. And again, I seriously do appreciate your patience because I know this is a crazy time. Uh, a lot of you know, I'm about 1.5 right now in terms of guy, me and Charlo, you know, where we're doing our best to get through these books. Uh, but it's, it's a learning curve for us both. And thank you, Stavros. Um, Dennis says a good one. David Lelf out loud. Our pieces. I only asked about the CCSB because I think I used it before uh, for books I sent back in 2016-17. I'm wondering if it needs a second opinion from. Oh, um, 
I would think that back in the day when things weren't quite so hectic, maybe CCS was was not bad. Um, I think right now they're overwhelmed. They're they're, they're like I am. They're, they're they're at a seven. If you send your books to CCS now, it's about a year. It's about a year before the books are are, are worked on. About seven months to a year. So they are backed up with comic books. So that's what I'm trying to say. Even though I'm backed up too, I, I'm not going to cut corners. I, I won't do that. I, I see. I, I've suspended everything right now. I'm not even taking books in right now because. I got to work on this stuff, you know. I want to take your books right now. I want to take them and just put them in a pile and but cuz I'll know that work is there when I'm done, but I'd rather not do that. I'd rather just get this stuff done and when as I get towards, you know, to a better spot, then I'll open it back up again and then, and then people will start sending their books again. It always it has been going like that for for a couple of years now. So, uh I don't know, man. RP, you know, do you have any other friends that are comic guys? Just have them look at the books. Maybe cover up the grade and see what they think and look around the book uh, kind of like what I did. Angle it to the light and see if there's any damage in the book and if you think it could use another press, then by all means. I mean, RP, I, I don't know if you're Canadian. I think you are Canadian actually. If you want to send the books to me, I can have a look and give you my opinion. Um, you know, that's probably the best way to do it. I love it here. Well, good, Stavros. I'm glad you do. You're next. I use Joshua Avery for my clean and pressing, and he does a great job. He is currently backlog five months. See, that's a. There you go, man. I've heard. I've heard of Josh Avery. Yeah, he's a good. He's a good presser, and he's well known as well. And I think he's out of the states, right? I believe he's down in the U.S. And he's backlogged five months. So I'm. I'm pretty damn close to that. I'm at around. I'm at around the three to f three to four months mark right now. Actually, I'm I'm pretty much five months myself. I'm about five month mark too. That's where I'm at. That's it's it's sad. Like I said, I'm currently working on books from the fall, and I'm not doing them in any particular order. I'm doing the smaller orders really quickly right now, and the bigger orders. I'm like I just did a big order from uh, from the East Coast, about thirty uh, about twenty five books, and um, all big books. And they kind of jumped ahead because they were bigger books. And, and but I have uh, you know Wayne's got a huge order, like forty nine books. Just finished a huge order for Alex, sixty five book order. Like these big books, they, these big orders take time, right? That's the issue. That's that's where I'm slowing down. But these small little ones, these two book order, three book orders, I'm trying to get them done because uh, I hate guys waiting so long for two or three books. I really hate that, you know. So I'm, I, I should be done all the smaller orders within the next couple of weeks. That's what I'm hoping, anyways. Uh, when I fix other people's guitars, bing, bam, boom, it's done. Okay. Um, where'd I go here? <laughs> Dennis, my life is backlog 33 years. Nice. Hey, Max. How you doing? Max, not Max. Sup, Big P. How you doing? Uh, <laughs> RP, horrible customers. And that too. And that too. And the thing with CC, CGC, like I, I can't even get a hold of their accounting department, which is driving me crazy. Like I, I have a question about the accounts. And they can't even answer my questions. That's 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 ridiculous. When you're dealing with people's money, you better have someone be able to call and 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 discuss situations that arise with them. If you can't do that, there's a there's a big problem there. If anything, their accounting department should be fully fully staffed to take care of client issues because. I had, a, I had a problem. I contacted them like four weeks ago. It's the first time they never got back to me. The first time. Um, but what if something goes wrong? That's that's what I worry about. Uh, oh, freak, you don't come out to Hollywood. I love Hollywood. I'm going to come to Hollywood again soon, I hope. Uh, 26 watching, but only 11 likes. What the hell's up with that, man? Like the, like the content, please. It's free, man. Hit that like button. It helps me out, guys. It really does. It really, really does. Uh, hi, Kevin. Great video today. Thanks, Jeffrey. Appreciate it. Uh, send all your excess pressers to <laughs> Divi Claire. Just had a double fish fillet, Big Mac style. Not bad. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed your double fillet of fish. Fillet of fishes. I I I like McDonald's a lot, unfortunately, and I do like the fillet of fishes. That was fifth processed on my that was that was fish processed on my boat. <laughs> yep, I think the first order I sent you was like 50k worth of books. Yeah, it was. And you got them all back, I believe. Uh, right? <laughs> so, no, I'm not out to keep your books. <clears throat> uh Josh is good. He's in yeah, he's in Massachusetts. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think if I was down in the in the, in the states I'd be a lot busier. 
I get, you know, I have a lot of American clients and I do appreciate them uh, coming up and using me. Um, uh, you know, and I think this YouTube uh, has helped that and has increased my uh, American uh, clientele. And I love working with my, with my American clients as well <clears throat> when I can. But I think if I was down south, if I was like <clears throat> stateside, I think I'd be in a lot of trouble. I think I'd be a lot busier than I am right now. And I'm not even advertising. Like I'm not, other than this YouTube thing, I'm not really, you know, pushing, pushing my services because like I don't do the shows out here anymore. I used to do the shows here all the time. I go to the shows and set up. I don't do that anymore. Um, I, I might go this June to the one show that I always go to because I love that show. And it was the show that got me my start. And now that COVID is finally, well, not, not it's over, but I mean, now that things are opening back up again, it'd be kind of nice to, to see everybody. I guess I haven't seen a lot of my old clients in a long time. So I might go and do a, uh, grab some books from there at the end of June, but but yeah, it's 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 been a, it's been it's been fun, been a lot of fun. Um, uh, RP, yeah, I'm a whippy. Oh, there you. Oh, yeah, I spoke to you about my Nova number one maybe a week ago. I'll swing by weekend and bring a books in question. Yeah, RP, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. Let's look at them together and we can decide whether they're a good thing or not. Uh, Chew sis. No humans on the telephone. That's right. Mike guess. Hey, Kevin. Sorry, just joining late. I have to apologize, my friend. I submitted a Hulk 81, 180 and a giant size that's been in February. Just wondering when you think you'll get to them. Oh, probably, I don't know, November of 2023. No, I'm just joking. Uh, if it's just three books, Mike, uh, probably soon. Uh, the what, what has happened to books that arrived in around that time is I've kind of consolidated them into kind of a storage box thing I have. And those books are kind of there right now because I have no room here right now. But once I get to those books, um, hopefully sooner rather than later, they will get done rather quickly because there's only three of them and they're big books. So I'll get those, the once, once the books kind of come out of that little storage box that I have, I will, um, I'll get to them pretty quickly. And once they go to CGC, all those, Three books. Well, maybe not the 180 unless you want it to. Um, oh, and, yeah. And the X-Men Giants has X-Men. They'll go, they'll go, and they'll come back pretty quick. Um, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Yeah, we'll get we'll get those done pretty soon for you, Mike. Feel free to harass me. Text me once in a while, too, to remind me. But they should get done sooner rather than later. Um, hell yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, all American clients are louder. Are they? Are they louder? I'm a living in it. You know, YouTube land, the whole world in YouTube land. Yes, Kevin. I think you'd be slammed if you were stateside. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I even look at my I look at my Instagram, and my numbers are pretty low for the amount of years I've been doing this. Um, other guys started after me, and they've got like two or three thousand more followers than I do. And it's because I'm Canadian. Oh, and I'm Canadian. I'm Canadian. But that's okay. Uh, I mean, I just hit the two thousand mark on you on on Instagram now. Um, but that's fine. Again, I, I'm, I'm content. I, I, once things start moving at a pace that's a little better where my turnaround time isn't seven months or some stupid thing like that, if I can get my turnaround time to a month, month and a half to two months, then I'll start pump, I'll start advertising a lot more, doing a hell of a lot more YouTube videos, a lot more content as well, and try to increase the, uh, the submissions also. Um, that's as long as the hobby keeps sustaining, right? Who knows? I mean, who knows where this hobby is going to go in a few years? Um... Hey, Luke's in the house. How you doing, Luke? Uh, you're just getting here, and I think I'm probably going to be signing off because um, I'm, I'm tired. What a long day this has been. Um, hey, guys. Let me transition out of here. Thank you so much for coming by, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video I put together for you today. Uh, again, if you have any comic books that have been you know, already cleaned, cleaned and pressed and graded already, you think uh, they've been worked on, and they are... Um, uh, they're maybe in, in use of, or in need of, a, of extra love, give me a call. Send me some emails, send me some pictures, some videos of your, of, your, of your comics, and we can look at them together and determine whether or not maybe the books can be fixed up even further. Now, again, it depends on the book. Maybe, maybe it's not worth it. For a half a point, is it really worth doing all that work? But for some books, like the books I showed you today, as you saw, they jumped up quite, quite a bit. That's, that could be, in some cases, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars uh, added value to your books. So we want to make sure they are, um, you know, uh, properly pressed, properly cleaned, and graded uh, at that time. Um, look, I, I did promise to do a Moon Knight show. Have not done one yet. Um, 
Hit that notification button if you haven't done so already. I'll be doing a Moon Knight video probably at some point this week. Uh, I don't know if any boxes are on their way back from CGC right now. I don't think right this second there are any. And I just did five boxes today. If you didn't watch that five box uh, CGC unboxing, go back and watch it now on the replay because it's, it's there available to you. But I'll, I will certainly come on here this week and do a Moon Knight review of the show so far. And I'm going to give out two nice copies of some Bill Sienkiewicz uh, Moon Knight books as well. All right, so be here for that. All right, my friends. Listen, thanks so much again. I hope you had a great Easter weekend. Uh, we have one more day off tomorrow. Well, I'll be working, but I'm sure a lot of other people will be relaxing. I hope you have that opportunity as well to relax. And until then, my friends, take care. Have a great night. See you again soon. Bye for now.